the Bible says a lot about money. And if you're a Christian, that should be important to you and should want to know what exactly it says about money. And if you're not a Christian, right, if you renounce faith, there's still some valuable wisdom that can be gleaned from literature that is thousands of years old and has stood the test of time. So for the next four weeks, I want to cover four biblical principles about finance. Now, the Bible is not a handbook on how to manage finances, right? It doesn't tell you where to invest or, or you know, how to avoid taxes or how to make sure that we pass our, all of our assets to the next generation as efficiently as possible, right? It's not, it doesn't, it's not meant to do any of those things, but it does have time-tested principles that we can use and apply to our lives, the way that we view money, the way that we handle money, and it's just, it can be very, very helpful. So again, if you're a Christian like me, then this is very important to you or should be, and even if you're not, I would encourage you to listen because I still think there's some great things that you can uh, learn from this and, and learn from the Bible and, and from how, what it says about money and some just some good attitudes and those kind of things. So even if you generally don't like Christianity, don't like God, don't like any of those kind of things, maybe just think about it as a, as a historical lesson or if maybe you're going to study a little bit of the different faiths and those kind of things, I would encourage you to just, you know, still tune in and, and listen. And if you want, you can just tune out the next four weeks and, and come back when we stop talking about the Bible and stop start talking about, you know, taxes and the state plan and all that. Um, but I would encourage you to go ahead and listen and, and see what you what you get out of it. So we're going to look at, again, four biblical principles, one each week over the next four weeks. And this is not, by no means an exhaustive list of everything that the Bible says about money. It says a lot about money. There's a lot of passages that talk about money or that mention it. Um, so it's not exhaustive, nor is it properly weighted, right? I'm not taking the exact emphasis that the Bible puts on these different principles and making sure that I'm weighting them in the same way that perhaps the Bible does. I'm not a pastor, right? I'm a certified financial planner. It's just but my faith is important to me. I study the Bible a lot personally. Um, and so it, it's it's important to me. And so I wanted to bring what I've learned to you. Um, and I hope it'll be both cautionary, right? And encouraging in, in our walk with our money and in our faith if, if we're uh, believers. And again, so we're going to we're gonna learn these. And, and those four principles are, right, are to beware of the money you love, to be wise with the money you manage, to be generous with the money you have, and to be prosperous with the money you make, right? So we're gonna cover one of those each of the next four weeks. And so let's look at the first one just this week, right? To be aware of the money that you love. Now, maybe you've heard this phrase, right? Money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. You've probably heard that, right? Maybe you've heard it on a church or maybe you read it online somewhere from your uncle or your grandma, right? And, and maybe there's some story will come on the news about the latest corruption or financial greed or some of these things, right? And, and someone will sigh and be like, well, it just goes to show, you know, the love, you know money is the root of all evil. And, and, and so we hear that phrase a lot. And the question is, is it, right? Is money the root of all evil? Is that what the Bible actually teaches? And, and if not, what does it teach? Well, that passage is actually, and maybe you didn't know this, right? But that, that phrase, money is the root of all evil, is pulled from the Bible. And it's pulled from 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 through 10. The Apostle Paul writes, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People want to get rich, fall into temptations and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So what, what is he saying here? Well, a couple things. And let's first distinguish what the Bible says versus what we often hear. Because right? we often hear money is the root of all evil. But first, it says, and it, what it actually says, right, is that the that money is the root of all kinds of evil, not all evil, right? Indeed, money can be found in lots of evil. A lot of people that getting more money is the motive behind a lot of the evil that's in the world, right? Uh, second, it says it's a root of all kinds of evil. Money is a root of all kinds of evil, not the root. It's a root. Of money, right? Money is at the core of many crimes, right? From from dealing drugs to armed robbery to embezzlement to stealing time from work, right? That there's greed, or you know, the loss for money is behind a lot of these crimes, these these sins we would call them in, in faith. And but but so is greed for power, right? So is lust for people, and many other corrupted desires are out there. There's many other motives besides money and the love of money that cause people to do wicked things. So money is a root of all kinds of evil, not necessarily the root of all kinds of evil. And third, and, and most critically, it's not that money is the root of all evil. 
right? It says that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. Money is amoral, right? It's not, it's not good or bad. It, it, having money doesn't make you good or bad, right? Rich people aren't more special or evil because they are rich, right? And people in humble circumstances aren't more spiritual or more bad because they're not rich, right? It doesn't matter. Some people got rich by doing evil deeds, for sure, right? Many people got rich by doing great deeds, for sure. Some people stay poor because of evil deeds, for sure. Many people stay poor not because of anything evil that they've done, for sure, right? Money is amoral. It doesn't have, it's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It just is. And so the warning is against the love of money. Beware of the money you love, right? So, so what does it continue to say, right? If we back up a little bit, because that's, that's the famous verse, right? For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But if you back up and read it in context, right? It says, you know, wh- what does it say? Gain as much money as possible for this is great. More money is great gain. Ambition and desire for money is great gain. Hardly, that, that, that's not what it says, right? It says earlier on in verse six, godliness with contentment is great gain. Without contentment, no amount of money will ever be enough. Without contentment, no amount of money will ever be enough. You may have heard of J.D. Rockefeller. He died in the early 1900s, but he was one of the wealthiest people who ever lived, right? And and the richest person today, depending on when you look at it, right, is probably Jeff Bezos or or Elon Musk, right? And and their net worths, again, depending on what what the market's doing, uh, is around $200 billion, which is just an insane amount of money. But some estimates put J.D. Rockefeller, if you adjust his wealth at the time for inflation, some estimates put him around $340 billion. He was worth $340 billion. It's like an unfathomable amount of money, right? And someone famously asked, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rockefeller, how much money is enough? How much do you need? And his infamous response was, just a million dollars more. Just a million dollars more. He's $340 billion and he just needed a million dollars more. Right? Because without contentment, no amount of money will ever be enough. We need contentment. If you love money and you don't have contentment, no amount of it will ever satisfy you. And then right, you can't take it with you. It says, for we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it, right? There are no U-Hauls behind hearses. No matter how much money you make or how many possessions you accumulate, you can't take any of it with you, right? It's all going to stay. Estate planning exists because it all stays. Because when you die, you don't get to take any of it with you and, and it's all going to go to someone else. And, and so you have to literally plan and a lot of times spend money on making sure that your stuff goes where you want it to go because you can't take it with you. It doesn't matter how much money you make when you meet your maker. It doesn't matter how much money you make when you meet your maker. It doesn't matter how much money you have when you stand before the one who has it all. He's not impressed. It doesn't matter, he says, how much money you make or if you love money and you pursue it and that's the only thing you care about. In the end, it doesn't matter because you can't take any of it with you. He goes on to say, if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. And I don't know about you, but that's a hard thing to read. It's a hard thing to believe, right? To just to be content with only food and and clothing. That's like, that's not enough. I mean, that, that's like, you, you, you definitely need that, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs and all that. Like you need food and clothing, but like that would be enough. Like that, that, that's pretty hard to be content with just food and clothing, right? But it turns out that it's possible and profoundly preferable to be content with the bare necessities. To, to, and, and think about how that would look and feel in our own lives if that could actually be true, right? That it, what if we were content with just food and clothing? No amount of money or lack thereof right, would make us more or less happy. We would just be content no matter what. And does being content with the bare necessity mean we can't pursue more? No, that's not what contentment means, right? It means that we don't stake our contentment. We don't stake our happiness on having more or getting more, right? When you love money, you need more of it to be content. You need more of it to be content. You'll never have enough. But if you are content with next to nothing, then you will always be content. You'll always be happy because your happiness is not dependent on money. 
So why should we be content with only essentials? Why shouldn't we love money? Why must we beware of the money that we love? He goes on, people who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And how often do we see this? Right? People who, who love money, who pursue it at all costs, only to find ruin and destruction. When you love money, right? when, when that's your sole focus in life is getting money, and even if you wouldn't say it that way, right? a lot of people say, oh yeah, I love money. Some people would, but a lot of people wouldn't say it that way, but their actions and their drive and stuff like show that they love money money. And and when you love money, you are tempted to do all kinds of things to get it. Some are foolish desires, right? You, you, you play the lottery, hoping that you can get rich quick, right? You invest money into things, into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies you don't understand when you shouldn't be investing that money there, right? You you gamble or, or you give money to your friend's startup company or whatever else, and, and it ends up in financial ruin. You just do foolish things with your money because you want more of it and you're willing to do dumb things to get it, right? And then there are some are harmful desires, right? You you rob your employer by fudging time cards or numbers at work to get more money for stuff you didn't actually do and you get fired, right? You underpay and mistreat your employees to boost short-term profits and they leave and your business goes under. You cheat, backstab, and step on fingers and faces in order to climb the corporate ladder and you burn the relationships around you and it ends in financial destruction, when you love money, you're willing to do foolish or harmful things to get there. And that will eventually plunge you into ruin and destruction. And there are many people out there, right, that are pursuing money, pursuing money and their love of money by doing foolish and harmful things. And it appears right now, as we just, as a, in a snapshot in time, we can maybe think of some people like this that were like, man, I'm pretty sure they're doing some nasty stuff. They, they got to be doing, they, I feel like they're cheating somehow or they're just being dumb and it, it, you know, they seem to be getting away from it or, or whatever else. And, and they appear to be getting away with it, but what, it's not, not forever, right? Eventually that will plunge them into ruin and destruction. What goes around comes around, even if it's a long elliptical orbit, right? And, the, and Apostle Paul's final warning after his declaration that the love of money is the root of all evil is less about evil and more about its natural consequences, right? So he, so he makes that statement that we're all so familiar with. And then he says that 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 some do evil, right? In, in the pursuit of the money they love. And, but then there's this whole other set, right? He says, some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Some of us haven't done anything foolish or anything harmful in our pursuit of money. We simply wandered. We simply wandered. We've wandered from our faith. We, we had a great relationship with Jesus at one point and we were active in our church community, but, but lately we've been kind of more focused on our careers. We've, we've got some promotion, we're, we're making good money. And if we could just make a little more money, then, then we'd be content. But in the meantime, it, it's stressful and we're putting in a lot of hours to get it all done. And, 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 our, and our faith is on the back burner and we'll get back to it eventually. Yeah, yeah, we'll get back to it. Don't worry. Uh, we just need a little bit more money, just, just a million dollars more, and, and then we'll be content. And we've wandered from the faith. Some of us have wandered from our families. The pursuit of riches, powered by the love of money, has caused us to ignore our vows to our spouses and our responsibilities to our kids. We're doing good work, right? Our business is thriving. We surpass the highest ethical standards, right? We're not just avoiding harmful or foolish activities. We, we're we actually the highest standards possible. We're, we're building our business the right way and ethically earning every dollar we make. And we're doing well by doing good out in the world, right? We're doing business well out in the world. And, and all the while, we've wandered from our family and our relationships at home are strained to the point of breaking. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Lost faith, broken marriages, tenuous relationships. We don't need to do anything illegal, unethical, or foolish to love money. Even doing everything right, the love of money can pierce us with many griefs. Beware of the money you love. 
The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The pursuit of it tempts some into foolish and harmful desires and others from wandering from their faith, their families, or even their fitness. But godliness with contentment is great gain. If you love money, you will never have enough. When you are content with what you have, you will always have enough. Does this mean we can't or shouldn't have lots of money? No, in fact, the Bible teaches us to be wise with the money we manage. And you have to have money to manage to be wise with it, right? And we'll cover that in three weeks. Does this mean that we can't or shouldn't earn lots of money? No, the Bible teaches us to be prosperous with the money we make. And we'll talk about that in two weeks. Does it mean that we, you know, what it does mean is that we should be content with what we have, and keep money in a good perspective. And one of the best ways to beware of the money we love is to be generous with the money we have. And we'll cover that next week. See you then. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did enjoy that, you would love being a part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and you can sign up today completely for free. When you do that, you get a host of bonus and exclusive content that we don't give out anywhere else. For example, you can buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon, but if you become a retirement member, we will send you one for free and or give you the audiobook and ebook just for signing up. You also get additional bonus content, exclusive content, including client corner insights from some of the best minds in behavioral investing, workbooks to go along with our workshops to help you get the most out of it, and more ongoing bonus and exclusive content. Some of this you can't get anywhere else, and so we would love for you to join our community. You can join now at retiremembership.com. Otherwise, there's a link in the description of this video where you can sign up. All we want to do is continue to give you the best information out there so that you can retire successfully and stay successfully retired. So you can go in there, do that on our website. There's also a a longer form podcast. Uh, I think it's episode 80 that will help explain what it is and what we're trying to do with retirement membership. But join now for free. Get this and much more exclusive content by joining us today. We look forward to seeing you there and thanks for watching. Cheers.